There are a lot of hobbies I like to partake in, but one of the many things that I like doing is playing old school video games. There are a lot of ways that people are repurposing old school games, such as the mini NES and the mini SNES, but you wish you had more, you know? You wish you had more to play out of those systems, or wish any other company would do the same. Which is why the emulation community is still going strong after all these years finding ways to emulate the latest games. I mean, how else am I gonna play Breath of the Wild with Shrek in it? So if you're that subset of gamers that is really into emulation, then you'll probably wanna pay attention to this video. After all, how about playing your old school games like the arcades, just selecting the game that you want from a menu and seeing the awesome video previews or artwork displayed with it? Well, that's what we're gonna do today, my friends, is we're gonna make the game ROM selection process way easier and way more beautiful with this guide to Emulation Station. So in case you don't know, Emulation Station is what is known as an arcade front end, which if you are familiar with either Neo Geo cabinets or even modern day cabinets, they are known for selecting multiple games from. This is what this project is aiming towards, to select old school games using only a controller for easy selection, as well as seeing awesome video previews and menus for any game you select. Oh, and the best part? You don't need a high powered rig to make this work. So in this case, I have an old Dell workstation that I got off eBay for around 50 bucks, which I'll provide a link in the description below for more similar ones. I also have an Xbox 360 controller with wireless adapter, since what we're going to be downloading will already be pre-configured with this in mind. And of course, all the necessary power cables, keyboard, mouse, internet access, pretty much the basic PC stuff. But with that said, let's go for it. In order to get started, we'll need to download Emulation Station itself, but the version that we're going to be downloading is one called Portable Game Station, thanks to this gentleman right here where you can support his GitHub down below. The reason why we're doing this method is because this will allow us to unzip it into any folder we want, even from a USB drive, and it'll work regardless. There's also a lot of folders and emulators already set up, so we don't really have to pre-configure anything before starting up our uh, Emulation Station build. The next thing we'll download is the prerequisite installer provided by the developers of BizHawk, which will update and install all the necessary runtimes on our Windows machine, so that Emulation Station and our emulators will work properly. In case you get any errors when you try to boot up Emulation Station, such as missing DLLs, I'll put a link in the description below in case you run into any of those errors, and then you can download the proper files that you need. Next we're going to find our game ROMs. So in the Portable Game Station folder, go to the folder known as .emulation station, and then ROMs. Inside there are folders that are separated by a game system, and inside each folder is a readme file of what file types are supported. In these folders we're going to add our game ROMs. So in this case I picked the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, Sega Genesis, and PlayStation. And then we're going to add them to the appropriate folders. And once you do, that should do it. We'll be able to boot up Emulation Station and they'll recognize them. So plug in your Xbox 360 controller, make sure that it works, and then boot up windowed mode. You'll be then prompted to hold a button on your device to configure it. And then for each button input, enter in the corresponding input. Once you do that, hit OK, and then Emulation Station's menu will pop up. As you can see, all the games are separated by a system, so when we go into a certain system, you'll see a list of games that you can choose from to play. This is all fine and dandy if you just want a launching pad to launch your games, but we're going to go in a little bit deeper and add some of our artwork to it now. So in the main menu, press Start, Scraper, Scrape Now, make sure the filter is on all games, and all the systems are selected. Hit on on user decides on conflicts if you want to go through every game to make sure that it's correct, or hit off so that every game scans and the best possible selection goes with it. Then hit start, and the games will start scraping. If you don't know, scraping is a term that allows the program to look at a certain website and download either the artwork, the metadata, anything like that, that corresponds with the proper game. In this case, you can see that all the artwork and descriptions are matching towards all the games that we have on our systems. But once it's finished, you can go into any one of the systems and see some beautiful looking artwork and descriptions as well. Keep in mind though that it's not perfect. Like in this example where we have two Super Mario Brothers. So in order to fix this, we'll press the select button, edit this game's metadata, 
go all the way down to scrape, and choose the correct game. Then hit save. And as you can see, the artwork is properly displayed. So why don't we try loading in Super Mario Brothers now? And as you can see, RetroArch boots up, which is the emulator that goes with all the classic systems corresponded to these games. It's a great little emulator if you want to emulate multiple games. But as you can see, this is in windowed mode and we want it in full screen. So we're just going to open up RetroArch itself. Go to video and full screen and then it'll always boot up in full screen. And that should do it. That's the simplest way you can get Emulation Station running. So if you want to learn some more advanced techniques and tips, you can continue on to the video. Otherwise, you should be good to go. Since we're going a little bit more advanced, we're gonna take a look at how to add our own video previews, box art, and wheel art to our Emulation Station build. In order to do this, we have to understand the directories that Emulation Station works from. The most important ones to consider are the ES Systems Notepad file, your games lists, and your systems. Since we're going with box art first, we're going to take a look at our game lists. As you can see, they're XML files, which you can easily open up in either Notepad or Notepad++ if you have that installed. If you're familiar with the coding language HTML, this should be familiar with you since they're separated by tags. Every line is separated by a piece of metadata that the scraper looked up earlier, such as the developer, the publisher, where the image is with the box art, the description, all that jazz. But on here, there's nowhere for wheel art or video art. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete these game lists and the downloaded images we got earlier. Instead, we're gonna use our own game lists that already have all the games ever made for that system, as well as more artwork tags. I'll put a link in the description below of where you can download these lists. But basically, we're gonna put these game lists inside our ROM folders with the corresponding system. Once we do that, we're gonna open up our game list. And as you can see, there are more tags set up here. The marquee tag and the video tag. This is what's going to make Emulation Station look really good. So what we're going to do is inside our ROMs folders, we're going to make three folders. Box Art, Wheel, and Snap. The box art is essentially what it is, the box art of each game. The wheel art is basically the logo, as you would see on top of a marquee, and snaps are essentially video previews, like those demo videos you used to see at Walmart all the time. In order to find these files, there's a site that I primarily use called EmuMovies, which once you make an account, you can go to each system and download the proper artwork. But if you want to find some more customized artwork, I suggest going to either Google Images or for videos, either YouTube and finding a downloader for it. But once you do that, put the proper artwork into the proper folders. And the one thing I can't stress enough is that make sure all the names are matched, including what's in the games list XML. So for like 1942 Japan USA, make sure that's the same thing for the box art, the wheel art, the snaps, and whatever is in the game list. This is one of the most overlooked steps in this process, but if you get it down, then there shouldn't be any problems. Make sure you do this for every system that you plan on putting into Emulation Station, so it'll come up the way that you want to. The next thing we're going to take a look at is putting themes on your Emulation Station. I included a download link to some of the themes that I use, but I recommend going to the RetroPie website, with this particular page focusing on the themes. In this case, there's a lot of themes to choose from, so it's just up to you and Google to find the download links for each one. And that's pretty much it, so let's boot up Emulation Station again. As you can see from our game lists on the NES, the video snaps are loading in properly for each game. So let's change our theme, shall we? So we're going to hit Start, UI Settings, and scroll all the way down to Theme Set, and choose the theme that you want to select. And it should load in properly, so now that we have a cool-ass theme for each one of our systems. I like this one in particular, Old Room, that makes it look like my dusty old basement when I was a kid. But as you can see, the wheel art and the snap art is loading in properly, just like how we put in our XML file. You might have to take another look to see if the names match. The last thing I want to talk about today is choosing a particular emulator for a specific system. So let's say RetroArch isn't cutting it for you and you want to use a different emulator that you like for a particular game. 
In this case, we're going to try out BizHawk for the PlayStation. Now, if you don't know, I already did a video on how to run emulated games on BizHawk already, so I'm not going to go over this again. But we're going to take a look at how to switch an emulator from RetroArch to another one, in this case BizHawk. So we're gonna download BizHawk from the website here. There's also a download link below, don't worry. And unzip it in the systems folder. Since we're gonna be running PlayStation games on this emulator, we're gonna wanna go into our firmwares folder and put the proper BIOS in it. Just Google around for this particular piece of information here and just put it in the correct folder. Then we're gonna go to config, then firmwares. We're going to scroll all the way down to PlayStation, and under PlayStation, select BIOS U and set customization. Then find the BIOS file you just downloaded and select it. Now close out of it and test the game out to make sure that it runs. In this case, I got Crash Team Racing. And as you can see, it loads. By default, BizHawk is already set up to use the Xbox 360 controller, so we really don't have to go into that. If you have a different controller in this case, I would go to config and controller settings. Just like with emulation station, you'll just have to go through each input and set them. But to make sure that it goes full screen every time it loads up and set it to full screen. And to make sure that it exits out after we're done playing, we're going to go to hotkeys and under general select exit program and we're going to set an input for it. So now every time we press this button, BizHawk will close out and Emulation Station will pop up. Now we have to go to Emulation Station's front end and make sure that the proper emulator is stored here. So we're going to open up our ES systems file. You can either use Notepad or Notepad++ in this case. As you can see, this is a very long file path, but we're going to change PlayStations. So we're going to find a particular text either by going to edit and then find and look up PSX and we're going to separate the lines like this. Make sure you follow what's on screen and by each tag. You can go on emulation station site to see what each tag means. But in this case we're going to replace the command line with this here. Make sure you follow the proper text on screen so that BizHawk will load properly and then save. And now every time you load up a PlayStation game you'll get BizHawk instead. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. This is just one step forward in what we're doing to make the ultimate arcade. Emulation Station is a great program but has some limitations. But in general, it's one of the most basic ways you can set up an awesome arcade front end. So get out there and download some games, legally of course, and make an awesome arcade setup in your living room. Thanks for watching! I hope you liked this new look for Maximum Tips. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe for more awesome gaming related videos, as well as other things as well. I promise there's going to be more tutorials in the future related to this kind of thing. If you want to see more of my gaming skills, check out my streams that I'm going to start up again. I hear Cuphead's pretty good.